This episode relates the story of Frances Slocum's abduction by Delaware warriors in 1778 and her captive years in northeastern Indiana. Three Delaware warriors abducted Frances Slocum and her brother from their Pennsylvania farm on November the second, on November the second, seventeen seventy-eight. Frances Slocum lived from seventeen seventy-three until March the ninth, eighteen forty-seven. A native of Warwick, Warwick, Rhode Island, and one of ten children born to Jonathan and Rudith Tripp Slocum, Frances' family immigrated to the Wyoming Valley in northeastern Pennsylvania in seventeen seventy-seven. During the Revolutionary War Battle of Wyoming in 1778, many residents fled the area. The Slocums were Quakers and believed that their pacifist practices protected them from the natives. This proved untrue as on November 2, 1778, three Delaware Indians attacked the family farm while Jonathan was absent. Ruth and most of the children managed to escape. However, Francis, her brother Ebenezer, and a family friend named Warham Kinsley did not. The Delaware allowed Ebenezer, who was disabled, to return to the family. Francis and Warham Wareham were held. They held and carried to spend the night on a rock ledge above Abraham Creek. Francis tried to escape but was unsuccessful. The Delaware sold Francis to a childless Miami couple who adopted her. They named her Maconaqua, Young Bear. She learned the native lifestyle and soon adapted to it. She grew into a beautiful young woman with red hair and light skin. After the Continental Army burned their crops in 1779, the natives fled west to the village of Kakianga, which is now Fort Wayne. She married a Delaware man named Tuckhorse. He treated her badly, continued to live in his parents' crowded wigwam, drank heavily, and stayed away from her on long hunting trips. McConaqua soon returned to her parents' wigwam. Later on, she encountered a badly wounded Miami brave called Shipokona. She was, he was in bad shape, so she brought him back to her parents' wigwam and cared for him. He recovered from his wounds and took, the co- took her to wife. Together, the couple had four children, two boys and two girls. The boys would not survive childhood. The couple lived in a village along the Mississinawa River. Shepokona became a chief of the Miami. However, he lost his hearing and left the village, moving to establish a trading post near Peru, Indiana, that became known as Deaf Man's Village. He attained some wealth there, dying in 1833. Trader Colonel George Ewing stopped at Deaf Man's Village on one of his trading forays. The village had become a popular popular gathering place and trading post during the years Ship Okona lived there. While, while there, Makanaqua spoke to him of her past. She told him that she was white and that the Indians had abducted her as a young girl from a family named Slocum. By now, Maconaqua had forgotten English and only spoke the tribe's tribe language. Clo- Ewing sent a letter by to the Delaware Wyoming, Wyoming in Valley Postmaster, who also published the years local paper. And in the North letter became North misplaced Indiana. somehow, and it, three two Delaware years warriors for the abducted Francis Slocum and Dixon her brother advertised from the Pennsylvania farm on November regarding the girl taken on November the second by the Delaware. The family had searched Francis Slocum for Francis and a great deal of time and money until March the ninth, eighteen forty-seven. Natives had killed John of Warwick shortly after Warwick Francis' Rhode Island, abduction, and one Ruth had admonished the children to continue Jonathan their search and before she died in eighteen o seven. Francis' family immigrated Francis to the Wyoming Valley 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 and Slocum Slocum traveled to Peru in eighteen thirty-eight to meet his sister. They identified her from the scar on her finger that he had made when the accident late. Hit her many residents fled the, the area. Hammer, the Slocums she was were Quakers, and the two needed, that their needed an interpreter and protect the two from needed the natives. An interpreter this proved to untrue they as they on talked for hours. The second, Another brother and sister, Joseph three Delaware Slocum Indians, and attacked the family arrived to see her. They would later return with their children. The Francis Slocum was not leave her tribe, choosing to remain with them. Her story received widespread coverage, and she gained some fame. The Anna. renowned artist George Winter painted her portrait. Francis when the Slocum government and forced her brother Miami to leave, the she, with November the aid of her the brothers, on requested an exemption to the law. Congress granted Francis the exemption, Slocum lived and she was allowed to stay with her family until March she the died 9th, of pneumonia on March the 9th, 1847. Warwick, Francis Rhode Island, Island State and Recreation of Area at Mississinawa Lake bears her name. Francis' family is located in the Wyoming Valley in northeastern Pennsylvania in 1775 E7. 
Peru during the Indiana Revolutionary War, War Battle of Wyoming in 1770, many residents fled the seven, area. Six, five, the slocums were seven, Quakers three, and believed that six, their past five, practices two, protected the next them from the natives. Continues the this proved untrue the story as on Daniel Boone, Boone the second, with the construction of the Wilderness three Road Delaware in Indians Kentucky. Indians attacked the family Find out more forum. about Indiana John history by purchasing the book, Indiana's Timeless Tales, Prehistory to 1781. The book includes the early history of Indiana from the time glaciers melted until the final days of the Revolutionary War. The book includes sketches of the native tribes that inhabited the state, as well as French outposts established during colonial times. You can find it on my website, www.mossyfeetbooks. There are links to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Google Play, and other online booksellers. Purchase the book in ebook or softbound versions. An audiobook version is available on Google Play. Residents of southeastern Indiana can find my books at the Walnut Street Variety Store on George Street in Batesville. At the conclusion of this series, I will compile the episodes into an audiobook. The audiobook will be available on Audible, Amazon, Apple, Barnes & Noble, as well as many other audiobook sellers. You can also order these books directly from me, the author, on the webpage. If you wish me to sign a book, just send me an email to mossyfeetbooks at gmail.com requesting a signed books and instructions on how you want me to address it. Note, if you send me an email, I will add you to my contact list. Readers on the list will receive an email from me announcing when I publish a new book. If you do not want me to add you to the list, tell me and I will not add you. Listeners of this podcast that want an email notification of my new releases can just send me an email requesting addition to the list. You can choose to have your name removed at any time. If you browse the website, you find dozens of sample chapters, one for each of my books. The next chapter, next episode, will. I hope you enjoyed this podcast and thank you for listening.